chapter number uh, 8, please. The Gospel of John tonight, chapter number 8. John's Gospel, chapter number 8. And I want to read just one verse, just one verse. And the Lord Jesus is speaking to these religious uh, Jews. And he says in verse 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. If, ye, if the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing upon that one verse of Scripture this evening. Before my former pastor was converted to the Lord Jesus Christ, he was caught by the police in robbing a house. And as he was brought to the Crumlin Road Court, he stood that day at the bar and watched the judge looking over those wee half-rimmed glasses and saying to him, Ivan Thompson, you have been proven guilty. I send you now to eight months in prison. As he was taken down to the custody cells, he didn't know what to expect, and some other person was there waiting, and he says, is this your first time been sent down? He says, yes, this is my first time, Ivan said. And he says, well, this is my third time. And Ivan says, well, if you're a regular in the prison, can you tell me what it's like? Butlins, he says. Butlins, holiday camp. You'll enjoy it. And Ivan thought this was, oh, this was going to be great. And he was sent down to prison. But on that evening, his first night in, in the cell, isolated and alone, Ivan Thompson said, it wasn't Butlins. And he says, this is the problem with many today who are in prison, prison is full of young people today because somebody told them it's butlers. You know, friends, this evening prison's not a nice place to be. And yet, for so many this evening, people see their life as a prison. Many people this evening see the lives that they live as a prison. Many are confined to the, the prison walls of loneliness. Do you know this evening that loneliness is a growing concern in today's society? And many people this evening, they feel imprisoned within these walls of, of loneliness. I was reading an article, article the other day where a young lady had put an advert in the paper, five pound for anyone who will allow me to listen to them talking. So desperate. And you know something this evening? There's so many tonight who are imprisoned within the walls of, of loneliness. There's many this evening on they're not imprisoned in within the walls of loneliness, no. They're imprisoned within the walls of guilt. Their past has imprisoned them. And they're within, they're caged within the walls of guilt. Even the very psalmist David said in Psalm 51 and verse 3, My sin is ever before me. And there's many this evening who live like that. Their, their sin of some past time is always before them. And they're imprisoned within the walls of guilt. And there's many imprisoned within the walls of loneliness. But you know the greatest and the worst prison house of all is the prison house of sin tonight. Dear unsaved person in this meeting, if you're not saved tonight, you're confined tonight to the prison house of sin. And your prison master tonight is the devil. And there's people this evening who are confined to such a prison. 
And I wonder this evening, are you that person? You know, the Lord Jesus in this verse brings a great hope, you know. The Lord Jesus said concerning himself, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Do you know there's people crying out for freedom? People crying out for release. I can tell you where real freedom can be found tonight. Real freedom can be found in the Lord Jesus Christ. Real freedom is found in Him. And that's where you'll find real freedom this evening. Very quickly, I want you to notice that text tonight. There is steps to that freedom because this text says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. It doesn't say the Son shall make you free and ye shall be free indeed. It says this if. You know, Tonight, if you're a prisoner to sin and you're a prisoner to Satan tonight, there's a step that you must take if you want to be set free tonight. First of all, friend, there's this great if tonight. And there's this step that lays on the lap of the prisoner this evening. And if you want freedom that can be yours tonight, you must first of all take this first step. You must first of all acknowledge that you're a lost sinner. Friend, this land is darkened tonight. This land is blackened out tonight with denominations and with traditions. And tonight the devil is using traditions. And tonight the devil is using denominations. My friend, if you're ever going to be set free tonight from the prison house of sin, you have to acknowledge tonight you're a lost sinner not a Presbyterian, not a Baptist, not an orange man, not a Methodist, not a Catholic. If you're ever going to be set free, you'll have to stand before God and say, I am a guilty sinner. You know, he's the judge tonight. He's the judge that loves to hear the confession of a sinner. The moment he hears the confession of a sinner, that's the moment the Lord Jesus longs to set them free. You know, dear unsaved friend tonight, if you never acknowledge you're a lost sinner, you'll never be set free. And friend, this evening, this is the big problem tonight. People don't realize that you're a prisoner. If you're not saved tonight, you're a prisoner to sin. And you're a prisoner to Satan. And I'll tell you the prison house of sin is absolutely nothing like the maze prison. It's nothing like tonight. It's nothing like the Crumlin Road. The prison house of sin has a penalty hanging over it. And the prison house of sin still believes in the death penalty for the wages of sinner's death. And you know, friend, this evening you need to take Take note of that tonight. Verse number 34, the Lord Jesus says, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. That means you're a slave to sin. Do you ever tell a wee white lie? You see, there's no such thing as a wee white lie tonight. You told a lie, you're a servant of sin. You're in prison. You wonder this evening, have you, have you ever stole anything? Even if you have stole a wee pencil of somebody when you were at school, you're guilty. You're in prison. Friend, this evening, if you've ever coveted another man's possession, you're, you're in prison tonight. You've broke the law. And tonight you're in the prison house of sin. You see, the big problem is this night. Everybody wants freedom. Everybody wants to set, be set free. But my friend, not everybody tonight admits they're a sinner. Wonder do you admit to a sinner? Because, friend, if you want to be set free tonight, that's where it is. That's where it begins. You read through the four Gospels, friends, you'll find how the lepers were set gloriously free. And they're set gloriously free because they knew that they were lepers, and they went to the Lord Jesus because of their leprosy. And because they went to the Lord Jesus because of their leprosy, the Lord Jesus done a work that nobody else could do. You think of the blind men in the Gospels this evening. How the blind men went crying after the Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon us, thou son of David. 
And you remember how the Lord Jesus was able to set them free because they knew they were blind. You know Roy Park tonight, and Raymond McConnell tonight, and George McConnell and every one of us here that's saved tonight. We went to the Lord Jesus, not because we didn't know, it was because we did know, and we do know, that we were not and only sinners in the sight of a holy God. You see, friend, that's the first step you need to take tonight and realize you are a lost sinner. And it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, how rich you are, how poor you are, how right you are, how wrong you are, how religious you are, you're a prisoner tonight. And you're a prisoner to sin and to Satan. You know, there's another step you need to take tonight. You need to take this step tonight. You need to believe tonight. You believe, need to believe that you can do nothing for yourself. There's no escape from this prison this evening. There's not a thing you can do concerning that. You must believe tonight that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only way. You know, you'll get anybody now believing anything. You'll get anybody believing anything, only the truth. You get a man that will believe a lie quicker than what you get him to believe the truth. And you know the Lord Jesus in this very same chapter says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Because the truth teaches us tonight that we are sinners. And the truth teaches us tonight that the Lord Jesus Christ is the only Savior. The truth teaches us tonight, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It is the truth tonight that teaches us that where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh to the Father but by me. You know, friend, tonight, if, that's the big word tonight, if you acknowledge and if you believe. Then I want you to notice the source of this freedom tonight, because listen to what it says. If, if tonight, if the Son, therefore, shall make you free. Ye shall be free indeed. You see, this text teaches us that the source of spiritual freedom is not in religion. The source of spiritual freedom is not in good works. The source of spiritual freedom is not in sacraments. The source of spiritual religion tonight, it's only in the Lord Jesus. It's only in him tonight. Lord Jesus said in Luke 4, sorry, Luke 4, verse 18, He hath sent me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recover sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bound. And you know, tonight, unsaved person, you're a prisoner. You're a prisoner to Satan. You're a prisoner to sin. I wonder tonight, do you realize you're a prisoner to sin? And you're a prisoner to Satan. You see, the big problem is tonight, there's a lot of people who are prisoners and they don't realize it don't realize it. You see, dear unsaved person tonight, the source of freedom tonight is found in the Lord Jesus. Isaiah 61, verse 1, we read, He opens, he opens the prison to them that are bound. Do you know how he did it? He did it by going all the way to Calvary's cross. And there he went as a sinless person to a place called Calvary. And there he gave himself to Roman soldiers to be taken and to be crucified and to be made sin for us. And instead of you and me being punished for our sins, the Lord Jesus on Calvary's cross hung there as the Lamb of God. You see, in God's sight, He was God's Lamb. 
but in man's sight he was nothing. And I wonder tonight, as you look to the cross and you see the bleeding, dying form of one there tonight, I wonder this evening, do you see the man who loved me and gave himself for me to set me free? Because that's what the Lord Jesus went to the cross for, to set the prisoner free. And you know, dear unsaved friend tonight, it's a powerful moment when light comes in and you know, maybe you're in this meeting this evening or maybe watching at home, I don't know. But listen, friend, right? if you realize tonight that you're a prisoner to sin and a prisoner to Satan, glory to God, there's one who can set you free tonight. There's one that can set you free. Back in November when we were over in London with the police, at the memorial service at Westminster Abbey, there was a wee man who was with us who closed in prayer. And I knew the way he prayed, oh, this man's a believer, all right. He talked about the blood, and he talked about the cross, and he talked about the Lamb of God. And I can tell you, when he prayed, my heart lifted. And I made a beeline after him, says, hey, hey, I love the way you prayed, sir. He says, are you a believer? Am indeed, he says. Am indeed. He says, how were you saved? Well, he says, in the early 70s, I was caught and done time for terrorism. And he says, I was sitting in my cell one Sunday afternoon, and we had a wee radio, and was tuning through the radio, and I tuned into downtown radio, and it was the gospel hour. And he said, I listened, and he said, I heard them playing the Elvis Presley song, He Touched Me. And being an Elvis Presley fan, he says, oh, oh, it's great to hear someone good. And he says, but I listened, but it was more than his voice I heard. The words spoke to me. And he says, what words was that? And he said, the shackled by a heavy burden, neath a load of guilt and shame, then the hand of Jesus touched me. Now I'm never more the same. And he says, that was that done it for me. He says, then the hand of Jesus touched me. And he says, here I was, sitting in a prison, in a wee cell, with no hope, with no nothing, with no friends, no family. And in that prison cell, the hand of Jesus touched me. And there, on that Sunday afternoon, he set me gloriously free. And then he said this, since I've met the blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, I'll never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while eternity rules. Listen tonight, you're a spiritual prisoner this evening. You're on death row. And my friend, this evening, you're doomed tonight. But the Lord Jesus come. He suffered and bled and died to set you free. And my friend, this evening, do you not want him to set you free tonight? He's the one who can. But look at the surety of this freedom. For if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You know what he'll set you free from? He'll not set you free from suffering because we all suffer. He'll not set you free tonight from pain. We all have pain. You know what he'll set you free from? He'll set you free tonight from the penalty of sin. He'll set you free tonight from death and hell. He'll set you free tonight from, from, from condemnation. As the old song says, once I was bound by sin's galling fetters, chained like a slave, I struggled in vain, but I received a glorious freedom when Jesus broke my fetters in twain. You know, tonight, as Roy and as Raymond testified, I want to testify tonight. Thank God I'm free. I'm free tonight. Set free. As Christians I see, and they're so doom and gloom looking, sometimes I wonder, are they still in prison? Oh, thank God, when Christ makes you free, Amen. you're free indeed. And don't be afraid to smile about it either, because when he sets you free, oh, you're free indeed. Free from the law. Oh, happy condition. 
And if therefore the Son makes you free, ye are free indeed. Let's bow in a wee word of prayer. Father God, tonight we thank Thee for Thy presence. We thank Thee, Lord, indeed, for the saving work of the Lord Jesus. We pray tonight for any that's still tonight enslaved by sin or by Satan, that this night they would seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him while he is near. We thank you, Lord, tonight for the Lord Jesus, who is able to set men free, and we give thee all of the praise and all of the glory for Christ's sake. Amen.